Well, I am glad you're here today, and I'm just really excited about that child dedication and just seeing what God's doing in our church. We're beginning a new year, and we're beginning a new series, kind of. We had started in the book of Mark, and we had a launch that we wanted to do, and so we took a pause, and now we're coming back in the book of Mark. Uh, The Gospel of Mark was written by a young man who was a follower of Jesus, and it's kind of the action book. A lot of things happening in the book of Mark, and what we've done is we're selecting themes that we think will really help our lives and that God could speak to our hearts. And so that um, scripture you just heard is where we're kind of picking it up in uh, Mark 4, and today... Um, I think God is uh, in our midst. He wants to speak to your hearts and mine. I learned a lot about my heart personally as I went through this very familiar story about this farming illustration. And I want to just pray right now and ask God to speak to us through these words and the things that I say and You can pray, too, and ask God, even if you're visiting, you know, I'm here, talk to me, see what you have for me, okay? Let's pray. Prayer is simply talking to God, and so we talk to you now. We believe that you are here with us. Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive and very present with us now, not just a myth. You move in our hearts and arrange circumstances in our lives to draw us to yourself. Some of those are good and some not so good, but we know you love us. You're here today, and you want to help us understand this story that Jesus told. So I pray that you would allow that to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. So I had the idea... Some people in our church do this. I thought we would feed the birds. We hadn't had any bird feeders. And I go to people's place, and they had these lovely bird feeders, and everything looks pristine, and birds are coming and eating, and like, we should do that. So I bought a couple bird feeders, and I put them out on a little trellis uh, in the back of our lawn here, rock garden, and we put the feed in it, and I thought all was good. Then I learned some things. I learned that birds, they don't eat all of the food. They, they kick it around, and so there's these bird seeds that are falling down on the ground. And uh, we're feeding them thistle seed, kind of a swear word if you grew up on the farm, thistles. <laughs> And sunflower seeds, they like both of those, I guess, but they don't like them enough to eat all of it. And so in a very short time, I'm watching thistles and sunflowers growing. And they're doing quite well. (laughs) And about three feet away from them is my lawn. And my lawn looks terrible always. And you would think some kid came in there at night with some Roundup and just spot sprayed it, you know, and just to make it look horrible. And so I understand a little bit about seeds and soil. And so I was really intrigued by this passage that Jesus is going to teach us from today. It would have been a very common thing uh, you can envision in G- where Jesus lived, called Palestine, that the farmer would have this bag over his shoulder. Kind of today they would call it a man bag, something like that. And uh, he had his seed in the man bag, and he would go along, and the broadcast spreader would be his hand. He would take it, and he would just kind of throw it out there. And some of the seed fell in different places, And Jesus is going to use that. His listeners are like, 
they're with them. You know, they understand this way of, of planting seed and how it works and doesn't. So I just wanted to like bring you up to speed on that because, you know, they're going to know right away what he's talking about. And we're going to try and, and help ourselves understand what he's talking about so we can get um, his points as he's going through this. The soil represents various conditions of the human heart. He's not just telling us a story about farmers farming. He's using it as a parable, which is a story that has a meaning for the hearers. And he says, if you have ears to hear, you know, let them hear. So part of my job is to help us have ears to hear a little better because, you know, we're not back then in that day. Um, the seed is uh, God's word, Jesus teaching the words that he's sharing. And so we're going to flow through this. And he's going to be talking about these soils. And the soils represent the condition of our heart. And they're not all the same. We've got lots of people here and other people uh, watching this online or what have you. They, our hearts are different. And, it, and you might like have different of these soils in your life at different times. Like as I went through this, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm like that sometimes. And you might be too. So let's look at these soils and look at, if we would be willing, the condition of our heart. Now, in this case, it's really beautiful because you don't have to like figure out, well, what does this soil really mean? In this story, his disciples are like, we don't get it. What, what are you saying? And, and so Jesus in this story actually tells us what each of the soils means. And that's going to be very helpful for us. So here we go. Soil number one is the person with a hard heart. These are the ones, the seeds along the path where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown to them. So he's talking about paths here, and I understand these paths because when we farmed, we milked dairy cows, and when I was a kid, we had to go get them. And so there were these paths, the cows, they didn't just meander all over the place. They all followed one another right behind the other one, and we milked them twice a day, and so over the years, the, the path just becomes, you know, hard as a rock. It's... There's nothing growing there, and nothing could grow there. So his listeners are going, yeah, I know, I know about those paths. We don't have those paths too much, in, unless you are in my back lawn and see where things aren't growing, where we've walked, and then it's like, hey, he's got a path there. But So you know, I was trying to figure out what this meant. And the truth is, I, I preached this message the last time through on Mark, and I've totally changed my view. I studied this more. The cows are going back and forth on this path. In Jesus' time, there was people on the path. There were animals on the path. And they're like constantly going back and forth. Got to go to the city. Got to go back. And they're hustling and bustling back and forth in this path. And there's so much scurrying to and fro on this path that a seed couldn't penetrate it if they wanted to. So I want to submit to you, you can think about this. I think the scurrying to and fro is what Jesus is getting about. In fact, when Jesus was actually teaching this, while he's speaking in the open air, there's people... <laughs> behind them that aren't like sitting around talking they're just like moving on they don't have time for jesus they got to get you know to the town they got a goat to sell or they've got something to do they're like moving and they're on the same path that everybody else is moving i want to submit to you that he was indicating something that is absolutely true in our lives these people were so busy that God's word couldn't get into their heart if they wanted it to. Just like as he's talking, there's people moving on, and they 
They don't have time to stop and listen to them. And so it's true of us. These are the everyday paths. You know, we're rushing around to and fro. Have you ever been like me and you like, you know, something happened and you were going to maybe look at your Bible and, and have some time with God and and then the phone rang, and so he had to deal with the phone call. Then you looked at your watch, and it was like, well, you know, I got this next thing to do, and I'll, I'll maybe look at God's Word a little bit later in the day, or, or you know, I'll listen, I know, I'll listen to it. You know, a lot of times I'll listen to it when I'm working out. But if somebody's talking to me when I'm working out, then I can't, you know, be listening. Stuff happens. And by the end of the day, he went through the whole day, and he just didn't have time for God. You have conversations with people. You got stuff to deal with at work. You're having relationships at school. You're on social media. Maybe you know competing with somebody on a video game. This stuff happens. And I just want us to, to just put that in the forefront of our mind because it sounds like what Jesus is saying with the hard heart is that the busyness of our life is just like squeezing them out. It's like the path is hard. So you know maybe you come here and some seeds scattered and it's falling on you. They can't get in. Just, you know, chew on it a little bit. It's like it's, it's, there's so much stuff going on in my life that I just, I'm really not growing. I'm not connecting with God. And I'm like showing up at church and I'm like, I can't figure out why, you know, this is happening. And the truth is, we don't have time for them. We're hurrying around so much. Jeremiah 4 3 is an interesting verse. Because these people were straying from God. Pretty hard path sometimes in the Old Testament for God's people. And Jeremiah's like this prophet, so he like speaks for God and tells them things they're supposed to do to get back to God. And the thing that he says is, break up your fallow ground. Now, if you're a soil and you have feelings, let me tell you, when the old moldboard plow goes through and starts ripping up that hard ground, that's going to hurt. And I think God wants to, like, till us a bit. He loves us. Listen to this. He loves you too much to just leave you nice and hard. He has the gift of life. He wants to speak to you about his love. He wants to transform you and encourage you and help you to get through some of the very difficult things you're going through now. Maybe a, a difficult marriage. Maybe a difficult job. Maybe a difficult friend that you have at college. But you just, it's like you have those problems, but it's like this faith business is not doing anything for you. And it could be. There's just this hardness that's happened because of the rat race of life. And God wants to come in and just like cut through that so you can be soft again. Softer heart, dependent upon God. Time to listen to him. Let his words soak into you a little bit. Break up that fallow ground that maybe needs a plow. Let God speak to you again. Maybe let him come in and have a personal relationship with him. It could very well be that there's People listening to me, and you've repeatedly come, but it's like, you know, I talk, and your heart's kind of like this. You don't want to keep going on like that in life. I know what that was like. My parents were very much religious people and churchgoers, and I was a little heller as a young person, and I was a heller in junior high, and then I got my driver's license, and my parents are freaking out because I'm trying to kill me and everybody else. But then God broke through the hardness. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I surrender. Come and speak to me. See, that's softness. Come and teach me something. You think about that soil. Is that you? It was me. Maybe it's time to not be so hard. Let the Lord soften your heart and plant his word in there. Maybe take an inventory and go, am I so stinking busy that 
Maybe God's trying to love me, and I'm not letting him. Soil number two. Soil number two is a person with a shallow heart. These are the ones who are sown in rocky ground. See, in, in, in Palestine, they got this like thin veneer of soil, and underneath it, it's just like solid bedrock. And if, that, if that's where you're going to plant your soil, your seeds, it's not going to go so good. Because it says they have no root. They hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, and they endure for a little while. Well, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. So this person likes starting out really great. Maybe they go to a crusade or a Christian concert, some rally, and some preacher says, you know, place your trust in Christ, and the person's like, yeah. You know, and then that's it. There's really no roots, there's no growing. In their faith, they just had like the emotional moment. And maybe some, you know, TV preacher told them, you know, that if you trust in Jesus, you'll instantly have wealth, you'll be healthy all of the time. And if you have enough faith, you can, you know, get rid of your cancer or whatever. And, and then it doesn't happen. And then you just like totally trash God. You totally trash everything. You thought that praying that prayer would save your marriage and your spouse is still planning to divorce you. And you're like, God doesn't exist anymore. My loved one died or I still got fired from the job. You know, I hate God. I hate this Christianity because of what? So you thought, and maybe somebody told you, I better not hammer too much on the TV preachers because ours goes on the TV. I mean, it's (laughs) going to be kind of bad for me. But you, you and I need roots. I remember when I placed my trust in Christ, I, I didn't know really anything about the Bible. And it was hard for me because I didn't have a small group or financial peace or some ministry to help me grow. And I struggled. And it was hard. And there were times when things happened in my life like when I was high school and I was slated to go to a conference in wrestling and I got my knee dislocated on the mat in the middle of, of a match, that's really cool. You're like an agonizing pain and you want to scream and say things you shouldn't. And you, there's crowds watching you, so it, it, you should try it sometime. Just try and hold everything in and be like, yeah, I'm cool and your pants is like jerked awake up here because your kneecap's dislocated. <laughs> And it's like, you know what happened? The kneecap was okay, but they x-rayed my knee. And they said, well, you have like a disease there, and we have to operate it on it soon, or you're never going to walk again. And I never wrestled again. I was done. See, if you don't have roots, which I didn't, you really start doubting God at that point. What are you, what are you doing to me? What's happening? I don't get it. So we need men and women in our lives that will help us Go take our roots down. Like, you need roots. Where's that roots picture? They're not doing so good. It started out great, and then the sun came, started baking on them. Didn't have roots down deep where their water was, so they're like croaking. That, I know what that feels like. You know what that feels like to be, okay, I'm part of the church, and thought I trusted Christ as my Savior, but I'm like croaking right now. See, what, what this person needs is roots. You have to go a little deeper. Depth. Because trials are going to come. When you read the Bible, trials come. You have to be careful who you're listening to as to how the Christian life's supposed to go. You need to be in a good church. Sometimes when I'm counseling people, I tell them that part of what you need to do is you need to show up here on Sunday Because we're doing our very best to love you and to teach you God's word to help you have roots. Because you can't just like float through life as a Christian. It's too hard for that. We need one another. We need one another to come around and strengthen us and encourage us. Maybe you need somebody else to like speak something from God's word that's true to actually encourage you. The trials are going to come. Authentic faith is not driven by the caboose of your feelings. It's driven by faith, the engine. 
And the engine's fed by the coal car, which is God's word. And you hang on to that. You hang on to God's truth. And that's not easy. And you, I now believe that you can't do that alone. See, we need one another to maintain faith. That's why we have small groups and we do all this stuff. It's a lot of work doing the stuff we're doing. We're not just doing it so we can say, oh, we have umpteen small groups or got more people coming to church, hooty hooty. I don't care about that anymore. I want you to know Christ and I want you to put down some roots and to grow with me because I need them. You need them. And we'll grow together. We're not in heaven yet. We need God's word and we need one another. A few years ago, I forget which year it was, a huge storm came through Marshall. Remember that one, this big wall that came in and tried to destroy the whole town? And we had a person in our church at that time, Carrie Henson, and Carrie had uh, trees in her backyard. She came to us and asked us if we could help her clean up. She had five giant pine trees, and they were all... <laughs> we had to go over there, chainsaws, do these hours of work, try and cut these trees all up and get them out of there. I was trying to figure that out because nearby there were like some oak trees and they were fine. And then somebody educated me and said, you know, pine trees have a very shallow root system where an oak's roots go down deep and broad. And the oaks held strong in the wind. And the pine trees just, we lost two out here. Just See, if you don't want to, you need some roots. You got to go down deep and wide, and you do that with one another. Third soil. Now, the third soil is a very interesting soil. Third soil is the crowded heart. And others are the ones sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and desire for other things enter in and choke the word and proves unfruitful. So, this faith. This could be me, and it has been at times. It could be you. This faith is getting choked. Now, if we didn't want to have our crops on the farm get choked, we had to cultivate them. If you have a garden, you have to go in with this hoe, and you have to chop out the weeds. And if you don't, then it looks like this right here. Now, you can't see, but this picture over on the right, on the lower, is actually corn, but it looks weird because of all this green stuff on top. That's, that's what we call ragweed. It's like killing the corn. Now, in this case, Jesus helps us. The weeds could be anything choking you, okay? Jesus picks two, I have those illustrated by these two guys over here. Isn't that really cool? These two, they're going to choke you out. And we don't want wimpy, wimpy lives as Christians choking us down. We want to be healthy. And so we have to go after the weeds. No weeds, good crop. And he doesn't make us guess. He lists two. These are the two biggies. There could be other ones, but these are the two biggies. Two biggies are... The cares of this world, literally that means the distractions of the age. Pen, might want to write that one down. What is distracting me? The distractions of the age and money. Isn't that interesting? These are the two biggies. Now, like I said, there, you could have lots of things choking your faith. But Jesus is like, these two are the big two. And they're going to crowd out and divide your loyalty. Jesus says you can't serve God and money. So it doesn't mean you don't use money, but if you love money and money's controlling your life, it's going to choke your faith out. He says that. So what's kind of dividing your loyalty? I think I shared this before, but I like it. There was a young girl man was trying to propose to her and he said darling I want you to know that I love you more than anything else in the world I want you to marry me I'm not rich I don't have a yacht or a Rolls Royce like Johnny Brown but I do love you with all of my heart and she thought for a moment and replied 
I love you with all my heart, too. Could you tell me more about Johnny Brown? (laughs) See, a heart that's overcome with a love for riches and the things of the world is not a believing heart. Your Your loyalties are divided. See, Jesus really put it to us. He said, you can't serve God and money. It's not like you can serve God with money. You have to like decide where your heart is, where your affections are. And then in relation to materialism, money, all of that, our goal is to love God and use things and never flip those. Now, I know what that's like. I know what it's like at times to go to bed at night and wonder, you know, I'm kind of getting older. I wonder how I'm going to do in retirement, and am I going to have enough money, or, you know, what am I? And it's like it just starts kicking into the other weed. (laughs) You start worrying. You know what it's like to worry? I'd probably some, you know, somebody would probably give me a gold medal for worry. I worry about a lot of things. Jesus is like, be really careful with that one. The anxieties of this world, the distractions, they're like, go back to my picture that I found. I didn't create it, but I love it. Those two little guys up there, they're like, they're choking out the grass. See the grass on the left side? That does not look like my lawn on the left side. My, mine looks like this one. My granddaughter thought we were growing these beautiful flowers, and I'm like, Those are dandelions. I hate dandelions. Like, well, they're pretty. Kill them. You got like, what is it in your life that you got to go after? You got to weed it out of there. It's going to choke you. Might be choking you right now. God loves you too much. See, the reason he writes this is he's just like madly in love with you. He's like, I don't want to be walking through life going, well, this is the Christian life. Really sucks, but you know. Maybe I won't go to hell. really sucks, but what is that? He wants you to have hope and courage and thrive. And you're like, well, I'm not. And he's just saying here, well, maybe check your life and see what's strangling your faith. Maybe something's got to go. Maybe it's a mind thing where you, you, you decide not to love stuff. Some people wed them. I've done this. I really have. Just being honest with you, you might be really disappointed in me, but sometimes when I'm like shopping, I'm actually confession time. I do shop at times as a man, I do. And sometimes when I'm shopping, I've learned it's because I'm anxious. So there you go. Stuff. To deal with my worry. I know none of you do that, but it's, it's me. It's mutually incompatible. Jesus says, listen now, but if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and alive tomorrow, and alive and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not clothe you a little of, of you of little faith? Therefore, So that one had to do with like collecting stuff and money. And then he goes, therefore, don't be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? God knows all of these things. Seek first him. Put him first in your life. Let's do that. We need to start cultivating that divided heart. Well, the last one's a really good soil. This is the fruitful soil. We'll go to Brian Novotny's and look at his lawn, and we'll get a good example. (laughs) But those that were sown in the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, I went to Iowa State, believe it or not, and got a degree in farming before I went into ministry, and they talked about something called good seed soil contact. You can't just you know, wing the soil out there. I'm sure in Palestine, when they put it in good soil, they kind of stepped on it because when the seed has good contact with the soil, it's going to germinate faster and grow. Okay, so that 
is what he's talking about with the Word of God. You and I need to be in contact with God's Word, contact with God's people. We need that to grow in our lives. And I really love that he's looking for growth in our life and faithfulness, not perfection. Jesus could have just said in this parable, listen to me, and you'll bear fruit a hundredfold. He didn't do that. We're not all the same. 30, 60, 100-fold, which means Jesus is not as concerned about the amount as he is about you being faithful to him and being in contact with him, and he will bear his fruit in our lives. Amen? So take these to heart. I'm wondering, worship team can come now. I'm wondering which soil in your life Jesus would just like tap you on the shoulder and go, you know, this one got some homework to do in this one. I want to come and give you my word, and I want your heart to be soft and fertile soil so that it's like that great cornfield you just saw that's growing and there's no weeds. And He wants that for us. It doesn't have to be a pipe dream. Let's stand together and close in song. Let's trust the Lord that he will bear fruit in our lives as we yield to him the conditions of our soil. <laughs>